Today we're going to talk about do anglers really need 15 to 20 rods on their boat deck at one time? Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Hey, before the video gets going, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and punch that notification bell. We have new videos that come out three times per week, and we also have a brand new blog site, thebassfishinglife.com, that has new content on it constantly as well, so make sure that you check that one out. I'll tell you what, I have had plenty of times when I'm pulling my boat into a gas station or a boat ramp or whatever and I've got you know, 12, 15 rods all up on the boat deck and inevitably somebody comes up to me, a lot of times they're, they're not necessarily an angler and they'll be like, do you really need 15 different rods out there on the boat deck? And of course my opinion, I have them, so yeah, yeah, I think you do. But what I want to talk about today is how these different rods are designed for very specific techniques. I always like to talk about mechanics. An auto mechanic cannot fix every problem on a car with one or two tools. They have tools that are specific to certain things that they're trying to accomplish when they're working on a car. Well, bass angling is the same way. There are rods that are very specifically designed for certain techniques, and that's what I wanna talk about today. Well, the first thing that we need to discuss is probably the most misunderstood terminology when it comes to fishing rods, and that's power and action. As anglers, we interchange these two terms all the time, and I've done it myself as well. We have all done it. Power refers to the amount of backbone in the rod, and you will hear terms like heavy or medium heavy, medium, medium light, light. That's all referring to power. So when somebody says medium heavy action, that's technically not the correct terminology. It's really medium heavy power. The action on the rod refers to the tip, the tip of the rod, and how quickly it gets to the backbone. So an extra fast tip means that tip is going to just come, to, the flex is gonna come down the tip a little bit of the rod and get to that backbone quickly. A fast action means you're gonna have a little more give in the tip of that rod before it gets to the backbone, and obviously a moderate action, you're gonna have quite a bit more flex up at the end of the rod before it gets to the backbone and a parabolic action kind of like what you would expect in a cranking rod or a cranking stick that's going to be the majority of the length of the rod is going to flex and bend so that's the first thing we need to understand is there's a big difference between power and action Real quick, as far as types of presentations go, okay, if we're gonna narrow down the types of powers that we would use for specific techniques, most of your horizontal presentations, your crankbaits, bladed jigs, spinnerbaits, those types of things, most of the time, if you're fishing horizontally, that is where a medium power is going to come in really, really handy. You're gonna have a little bit more flex in that rod. Um, the other way you can look at it is if you're fishing a lure or bait that has trebles on it, I like to go with a medium power. I don't wanna rip those trebles away from the fish, okay? They don't penetrate as easily and quickly as a single hook does. So if you're fishing trebles or if you're fishing more of a horizontal, that is where your medium powers are going to come into play. If you're fishing more of your bottom bouncing baits or you're flipping and pitching lures into heavy cover, that is where your heavy and your medium heavy power ratings are going to come into play. So that's the first big distinguishing factor when you're thinking about what type of rod am I going to need for a specific technique? Just think about it, are you fishing this way? or are you fishing this way? Let's go ahead and run right down those power ratings and I could tell you when I'm going to use each one of those. So let's start with a heavy power weighted 
rod. So that is a rod that's just got a ton of backbone, okay? It's like your telephone poles. That thing is super, super stiff. It's probably going to have an extra fast tip on the end of it. So when would I use a rod like that? I'm going to have that type of a power rated rod when I'm doing things that involve very thick, heavy, nasty cover. So if I'm using the punch rig and I'm just dropping these big one ounce weights down through hydrilla or matted vegetation, so I'm going to have a heavy power rated rod if I'm throwing a frog. So I've got that frog out there and if I catch a two pound bass out in that nasty vegetation, I might have 10 pounds of vegetation come back with it. So that is where a heavy power rated rod is going to work really, really nicely. Now what about the medium heavies? I like to think about a medium heavy power rating for more of your bottom bouncing baits and that's going to have your extra fast or your fast tip as well. And the reason people use the heavy power and the medium heavy power is because those bass are buried in cover and when you feel that bite and you get that bite you want to turn that fish, turn the head of that fish and get it coming to the boat as quick as possible so they do not get buried up in that cover. If you are trying to fish a really nasty brush pile with a moderate or a medium power rated rod, it's going to have so much give that bass could turn and get all bound up down there in the branches. So your heavy power ratings and your medium heavy power ratings are going to get the fish turned and coming out quicker because that tip is going to get to the backbone of the rod much, much quicker. As far as your medium light, okay, or your light power ratings, I might have some of those on some top waters. Uh, I like to use like a popper and I'll have a medium light power rating with that one. Some of my spinning rods are going to have those medium power ratings as well uh, on like a drop shot for example. But I also have used medium heavy on my spinning rods with great success on like my shaky heads, those types of situations as well. A Ned rig, though I do like to have a medium power rating on there because that hook is so small and fine. I just want to maintain pressure on that fish. I just don't want to go crazy and rip that tiny little hook away from that fish. So those are kind of the power ratings that I am going to use. As far as the actions and specific techniques, how quick it gets to the backbone, when I am doing those bottom bouncing baits or trying to cast it up into really accurate tiny areas, that's where I like those extra fast and those fast actions, okay? That little bit of a soft tip really helps me as far as like if I roll cast or just underhand cast. They do a great job of giving just, just enough whip to go ahead and get that lure when I want it. Now if I'm fishing more open water, like if I'm throwing deep diving crankbaits, I can have more of a moderate action and I'm going to get a lot more sling to that lure as I cast it out there. So um, crankbait rods often have a more moderate action to them. They have a lot more flex up there in the tip. Now if you notice, just about on every major manufacturer's website, they have the power ratings and the action specifically broke down for those rods. And many of them will put the techniques that work well with those rods right there in the description as well. So do some browsing around on the internet and I think you're going to quickly figure out what types of power ratings and actions go with each specific technique. The last area that we need to talk about as far as selecting a rod for specific techniques is the length of the rod. This is something that is oftentimes overlooked. Length is so, so important. Not only because of how it's going to help you fish that particular lure better, but you also need to take into consideration your own height. An angler that is five foot nine, five foot ten is going to have a very different length requirement on certain types of lures and presentations than an angler that is six six. So if you do things like you're fishing a jerk bait or a hard jerk bait, even soft jerk bait, if you're fishing, you know, a lot of top waters, buzz baits, um, walking baits, and you're walking a dog, that type of stuff, you're going to want to make sure that you have the length of a rod that is appropriate for your size because that rod's going to be pointed down towards the water. If you are doing more flipping and pitching into heavy cover, okay, then you're going to have a little more flexibility in the length of the rod. 
but as far as when I want a really long rod, and by really long, I should say seven foot six or more, I love to have long rods on my crankbait rods, my cranking sticks, because it gives me a lot more whip. I can get those deep diving crankbaits way, 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 way out there, make a perfect long cast so that bait gets down to depth before it gets into my target area or the area that I'm focused on. So that's where I like really long rods. My flipping rod is eight foot, okay? It's a telescopic rod, it's eight foot long, so it can reach up in uh, cover and I can just keep dipping it and dipping it and dipping it. So that is where I'd like a really long rod. But the majority of the length of my rods are in that seven foot to seven foot four. I found that works out really well for my height and it also works really well for most of the techniques that I like to do. Well, I hope that this video on more technique specific rods and clarifying what power rating and action really mean. I, I hope that you got something out of this. Go ahead and drop some comments down below if it helped you out or if you have any further questions as well. Hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today because you never know how you're going to change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.